Okay, hello and welcome to Boostio Productivity with Business Central. I'm Ivan Koletic, I'm a product manager in Business Central and I will take you through uh, this uh, session. Uh, the agenda today is uh, sort of split in two parts. First, we'll talk very briefly about some of the user experience improvements we have in uh, our mobile client. There's also a dedicated session for that uh, later on. I'll reference it in the, in the deck. And after that, we'll talk about uh, some of the improvements uh, that were brought in 2024 release wave one in the web client. So let's start uh, with uh, quick improvements that we've added uh, to a mobile client. As you can see on the screen, uh, uh, on, on the right part of the screen, we've uh, allowed, we've added access to worksheets from our uh, mobile client. So you can now access worksheet pages. Uh, you can see the header details. You can see the line details. And you can actually also see the, the fact boxes and the footer details of uh, uh, of the worksheet uh, pages, so there's no more, uh, there's no limitation uh, anymore of uh, looking at uh, uh, worksheet pages from version uh, 24. Uh, another thing that we are making uh, uh, with 2024 release wave one is we are making modern action bar uh, that we introduced three releases ago uh, mandatory. Uh, apart from making it mandatory. Uh, you will see there are some uh, minor improvements that have been also added uh, to the overall uh, action bar to sort of lower the the impact and the lower the impact of the change of uh, making the action modern action bar uh, experience mandatory uh, all of our users when they upgrade uh, to uh, version 24 will get a call out uh, that will explain and point to a video that uh, runs through the changes that are in being introduced with uh, modern action bar. Uh, apart from all the good, uh, all the goodness that a modern action bar brought, like three releases ago, like a very flexible personalization, uh, optimized layout of the action groups on the pages, and introduction of the split button. The 2024 release wave one version of the action bar also has, as you can see, this, uh, a couple of these new icons. So we've added a co-pilot icon. We've also spared some of the captions to uh, accommodate for space in the action bar. And if you belong to, one, uh, to the category of people who still want to keep the, uh, the, 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 the things the way that they are, each and every user in the My Settings uh, page will have an option to opt out of uh, the modern action uh, bar experience. The other thing that is worth to note is that the admins also have a way of uh, enabling or disabling that for uh, all the users. Another new thing that uh, was added in 2024 release wave one is a new date picker control. We got a lot of feedback that uh, with old date picker control, sometimes it was very difficult to, especially if you, if you needed to explore and find the dates that were far in the past or far in the future. And we know there are scenarios when, when these things uh, uh, when these things are, are needed. So hence we've introduced a uh, new date picker control. It, uh, it sort of has a, a similar set of uh, shortcuts that the old one had. It is aligned with uh, the date picker controls used in other Microsoft products, which means if you know how to use the date picker control, uh, I don't know, in uh, uh, Word, Excel, or, or somewhere, you'll be able to, uh, to use it uh, in here. Uh, 2024 Release Wave 1 uh, also introduces uh, adds action to sort of a platform generated, uh, to platform generated errors. Uh, once these errors occur and there is uh, no partner and Microsoft as well, we have a ton of uh, old legacy code. And a couple of releases back, we started introducing actions to uh, error dialogues and to inline validation dialogues. And the problem with the legacy code is that there is so many uh, places where 
uh, various validation errors are shown and so on. So we thought, how do we make, how do we make that legacy code base uh, also actionable uh, for, the, for the end users? Because we saw that these things are very useful in uh, unblocking the users. So with this release, you actually do get actions for all of those legacy platform generated errors by default with no uptake in your extensions or with no additional effort on the developer side uh, to, to, to get uh, those actions. You will see them uh, actually how, how they look like uh, in a demo. Another thing that we've noticed is that uh, there's a category of, of errors where uh, Business Central can help either by navigating the user to a page where they can actually fix the error or by providing an, an action that can fix the error. But there are cases where the user simply doesn't have permissions or, or needs help uh, from another user uh, to get unblocked. And with this release, we are providing an easy way to uh, share details about the error messages, be it through Teams or uh, via email. So let's say that you want to ask for, uh, for help from your uh, colleague or from subject matter expert or an admin, you would actually go and click Share to Teams to quickly explain where you encountered the errors and what the error was together with these details. What this, what this does, it actually helps reduce the amount of uh, the time that uh, a person who is supporting you, be it your admin or your partner, needs to spend in analyzing where that error occurred and what was the context of, uh, of that error where uh, it occurred. There are a few other things, a few minor things that I think is uh, good to mention and good to know. In the help and support page, uh, in many of these uh, support scenarios, uh, what a uh, support person is usually going to ask the user is to provide like the three basic details in order to identify the tenant, in order to identify the environment and the company uh, that uh, the issue has occurred. So with this release in the help and support page, you have a very easy way of copying that information and sharing that information with, with, uh, with the support teams. We've also, a uh, couple of months back, uh, we have also updated uh, our keyboard shortcuts PDFs. I know these are very popular with users. Some of them actually have them laminated uh, to get a quick overview of, uh, the, of the shortcuts, especially those productive users that want to do everything with a, uh, with a keyboard. And one last thing that I wanted to mention in here is that, is that there was also one feature uh, that was planned for the uh, April release, which got a bit postponed, and that is uh, the, the multiple um, file uploads that is actually coming in one of the upcoming uh, minor releases. And with that, uh, let's switch to demo and see all of these things in action. For the demo on Action Bar, we'll start in my company. This is to show you modern action bar callout that some users will receive when they upgrade to 2024 release wave one. The callout is informing existing users of changes in action bar. The callout will be shown just once, only if existing users have teaching tips enabled, only in existing production environments and existing production companies. This way, existing users can review changes introduced by modern action bar as for all new users, modern action bar is turned on by default. Back in demo company, let's explore action bar improvements such as addition of the new copilot icon, spared captions, and reduced space for search and analysis mode. So the copilot action, search expands when you click on the icon, and analysis mode got the new icon, which you can toggle to turn on analysis mode or turn off analysis mode. Admins can, of course, switch users back to legacy action bar experience using the setting in user settings page. This can, of course, then be done on per user basis. In case the user wants to keep the things the way they are and use legacy action bar experience in my settings page, the user can turn on legacy action bar experience 
for himself. Clicking on work date reveals the date picker control that is now aligned with other Microsoft products and allows for easy exploration of dates that are further in the future or past. This comes in very handy in finance scenarios. 2024 release wave one introduces automatically generated navigate action in platform generated error messages. For example, adding an item with a missing product posting group to the sales order line with, will generate such errors. Users now can click show item card to navigate to a place where the error can be fixed. This is of course true if the user has permissions to do that. In case user does not have the permission, user can now get unblocked by sharing details over Teams. For example, to ask a colleague or a subject matter expert in his company about the error. Sharing error details is not only available in inline error messages, but also in the dialogues. When you encounter an issue where admin or partner help is needed, the user can get blocked by sharing details over email as well. When sharing error details via Teams or via email, error details are conveniently copied to clipboard and available for users to pass them in draft email or Teams message. And one other thing, help and support page now has the capability to easily copy tenants, environment, session, and user details. This is useful where asking for help externally and help partners managing multiple customers easily identify who is reporting the problem, where exactly the problem occur, and what the problem was and find the issue quickly in telemetry. In this demo, what you saw was a, uh, a modern action bar uh, experience uh, in action with all the new improvements. You saw the new date picker control. Uh, you saw uh, how uh, uh, actionable platform generated errors help users uh, get to a place where they can solve the error. You saw how easy it is to share uh, error details through Teams and uh, through Outlook together with all the environment uh, information. And that actually concludes uh, our session uh, today. If you have the time, I uh, urge you to uh, have a look at the these two sessions, especially the, the one uh, about the mobile app and uh, barcode scanning, because they are gonna, they will take a deep dive into improvements that were made in Business Central mobile app. And the other one is uh, more related to a, a general design guidelines uh, for the AI experiences. If you, if you want to learn more, if you want to engage in the conversation, talk to the product team, and so on, uh, have a look at one of these resources and reach out to us. And with that, uh, I want to thank you for your time and your attention in this session.